What's up guys, it's Dr. Ray here coming at you with another video. Today guys, we're going to talk about Iron Finance and using it as a case example of how to become a smarter yield farmer. So before we get into it guys, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and look guys, if you want the most up-to-date information about the latest yield farms, the latest meme coins, follow me on my Telegram announcement channel, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, that's where I drop the fastest information. Because look, the reality is, making YouTube videos can't push out content as fast as I can, you know, in those other forms of media. So make sure you follow me on those other channels. Let's get into it. Okay, so I know I said we're going to do kind of a deep dive on Iron Finance and kind of go into um, kind of what makes um, an individual um, a sophisticated yield farmer. Um, but we're going to start off with just looking at ApeSwap first because I think it's a good um, example to kind of show uh, you guys um, where kind of um, you know you should really start um, in terms of your yield farming journey and how to actually look at a farm and understand how a farm works so um, because the reality is um, you know farming and crypto is it's a zero-sum game right just like any financial market right so money is flowing from one person to another right and the reality is you don't want to be the person whose bags are getting drained in order to funnel that money to you know somebody else right and the more knowledge you can arm yourself with um, the more you understand farms and understand the market you know you're gonna be in a better position in order to uh, both protect your assets um, but also make um, you know grow those bags um, in the long run right and that's really what everyone here in crypto is, is all about right we're here about um, financial transformation um, and changing our lives and we're doing and, and, and the best way to do that is by understanding the market and arming yourself with knowledge okay so the first thing you have to understand is look when, when you're dealing with yield farms whether it's ape swap or iron finance or anything else we have to understand is um, these yield farms are focused around tokens right and they're always focused around typically um, take, um, giving you a native token right and you have to understand basically how does that native token drive its value and secondly how is that native to token going to hold its value right so it's pretty simple the token will hold its value if either people are buying the token um, um, or there's some sort of mechanisms in place to reduce the supply of that token um, you know which then therefore will drive the price up right so you have to, whenever these farms launch you have to you have to basically ask yourself um, the question okay so how is this going to hold value right because um, if you don't think that the token is going to hold value um, then you shouldn't buy it right or you should buy it and have a good plan of when to exit it right um, um, so that's that's key one because if you don't understand that what's going to happen is you're going to like you know say you know when when banana came out when if first came out you know their token skyrocketed to i think like five or six bucks and then it just tanked why because it had no use there's no use case for it and it was pure just speculation that was driving the price up and you know when you combine that with the fact that people are farming the token you know farming the token what are they what are they doing with those tokens they're farming well they're selling they're not just keeping it they're selling it and if they're selling it that drives the price down and if enough people are selling it it drives the price way down right so you have to ask yourself you know how is this token going to hold its value well it's going to hold its value if people feel like the token is worth something right and over time um <clears throat> banana has really has, has kind of shown that there is some value to their token right like now the price is down uh, because you know things are a bit bearish but at one point their token went up to eleven dollars because they really were innovative right they were showing that you know they are a, a, a competitor to pancake swap they're showing that you know that their token is is you know has some use and that's what drove investors to buy their token right so that's the first thing you know understanding kind of uh, the psychology of these farms and understanding the psychology of other investors because remember at the end of the day people are going into these farms to make money and if there's people that are literally farming these tokens for free what are they going to do with it they can dump it and if you're holding these native tokens and people are dumping on you what do you think is going to happen to your bags well they're going to deflate right so let's jump into iron finance and kind of um, do a deep dive on it and so we can kind of understand really how the ecosystem works and kind of understand why the um, Titan token in general is really holding its value, right? So um, remember what Titan, Titan, uh, sorry, what Iron is really trying to do is 
create a uh, stable coin that is pegged to the US dollar that will hold its value. So um, iron, the iron token is not a true algorithmic stable coin, right? What the iron token is, is a, is a uh, fractional collateralized stable coin. So what that means is, so if you, if you know what tether is, what is tether? So tether is a collateralized stable coin, right? So tether basically says that they hold US dollars in their reserves um, to collateralize the value of the tether that is on the market. Right? So in that sense, they are a fully collateralized, we hope, stablecoin, right? So what is iron? Well, iron is a fractionally collateralized stablecoin. So what that means is iron is collateralized by storing uh, USD equivalents in their smart contracts uh, to as much percentage as they can. And the balance of that percentage is, is collateralized by their farming token, Titan, right? So what that means is a certain percentage is collateralized by USD, USDC um, on their Polygon chain, and then a subsequent percentage of that is collateralized by Titan itself. And it's fraction and, and it's collateralized not based on a, an amount of Titan, but 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 purely just based off of um, the USD, the current USD value of Titan on the market. So what that means is that when you um, when you use um, Titan, so I don't think it's going to load into connect. Let me do that. Okay, so say you want to come to iron and um, you want to create iron. So what happens is you have to supply, um, you can either supply just USDC, right? So that USDC goes into the iron smart contract, or you can use 70% USDC and 29% Titan, right? In, in, in based on Titan's dollar value, current dollar mar current market dollar value, and then it will give you iron. So what happens is this USDC gets placed into the smart contract, collateralizing iron, and the residual Titan, so you give them Titan, what do they do with that? They burn it. So if you have lots of people that are minting iron, you have USDC getting stored in the smart contract, and you have Titan that's getting burned and pulled off the market. So what does that do? Well, you're burning Titan. So that puts an upward price pressure on Titan because there's less Titan available, right? So now say, okay, well, uh, I want to redeem my um, iron. I want to get, you know, I don't want iron anymore. So when you redeem iron, what happens is they give you USDC from the smart contract, right? And they give you some Titan, right? Okay, well, maybe you don't want the Titan. So what do you do? Well, you take the Titan and you go and sell it, right? So what, ha what happens here is they're minting Titan, right? So they mint Titan and give it to you. So if they're minting Titan and then you're selling that Titan, what does that do? Well, that puts a downward pressure on Titan, right? A downward pr price pressure. So you have mechanisms at play here, which will push the price of Titan up and down, right? And you have the regular um, price pressures on Titan um, and on the open market, right? So if there's more people selling Titan than they are buying, price goes down, right? Um, and you have more people buying than they are selling, then the price goes up, right? That's just the way it works, <clears throat> right? Um, and same thing with iron and USDC. You have people that are, you know, not minting, redeeming, but they're just trading um, iron for USDC on like quick swap or sushi swap. So if there's more people selling iron, then the price of iron will go down, right? In comparison to USDC. So um, really the way their system is set up is smart because they're setting it up in a way where really Iron holds its peg based off of collateralization in the smart contract, right? Plain and simple, right? So um, it's not like some of the other um, algorithmic stable coins that other people are probably familiar with, which are really just complicated Ponzi schemes, um, you know, because those algor algor algorithmic stable coins are based off of complex mechanisms where they have shares and bonds and they really don't work. Right? Why? Okay. Again, it comes back to my um, point about when you look at a project and you invest in a project, you need to understand how the project works. Right? So with algorithmic stable coins like B Dollar or Midas um, or Bolt Dollar or any of these ones, well, how do they work? Right? Well, they work um, by trying to hold their peg when they're above a dollar by minting more coins okay and if you make more co make more coins what happens well 
more coins get dumped on the open market. So it pushes the price back to a dollar. Okay. And farmers are happy because they're getting free coins and they're selling coins, but what happens when the price is under a peg? Well, they try and use this complex mechanism where they have bonds. Well, what are bonds? What, what, what do the bonds do? Well, the bonds say, um, well, if you buy the bonds at a discount, you know, when the price, you know, gets back to a dollar, you know, you can redeem these bonds for more than what you paid for. Okay, great in theory. But remember, when we're farming, you have to get into the mindset of a, mindset of a farmer. Okay, so if you're a farmer, right, and the price is above a dollar, and you're farming, and you're getting free coins, and you're selling them, you're happy. Okay, great, you're happy. But when the price falls under a dollar, and you're farming nothing, and somebody's telling you, hey, if you buy this now, and if the price goes up, we'll give you money, are you going to be happy? No. Are, are there going to be some people that will buy it? Sure, absolutely, there's always some people that will do that. Stupid people, right? Because... Why would you ever give your money to somebody who's going to promise you to give you more money in the future if something happens, right? That's stupid, right? You don't ever do that. No one, no one, no, one, no sane person would ever do that. That doesn't make any sense, right? If some, if somebody says, hey, give me, give me your money and I'll pay you a percentage, well, that, that's different, right? Because you're paying your percentage, right? You're putting your money in the bank and you're getting percentage return. You're putting your money in a smart contract, you're getting percentage return. And I'm not putting my money in a contract, locking it away and getting nothing for it, right? Which is which is what a bond is with some of these other stable coins, is, is you're effectively trading your, your cash for something that is effectively worthless, right? Unless, you know, something happens, which is the price rises, right? And that's why these algorithms, you know, past algorithm stable coins fail. They don't work. They don't work in the long run because as soon as they lose their peg, they die, right? It's very difficult for those type of coins to regain their peg. But with something like iron, it's not an issue to regain the peg, right? If iron goes to 99 cents, 98 cents, it's not an issue. Why? One, they have USDC backing the smart contract, so it's always going to hold somewhat of a peg, right? And over time, as, as this goes on and on, the smart contract is going to get more and more collateralized by USDC. Right, right now, their collateralization is something like, uh, like here, you have seventy-five percent, seventy percent. Well, eventually, this is going to be ninety percent, ninety-five percent. So that's telling us that there's going to be more USDC in the smart contract than there currently is, right? And that's going to help iron hold this peg. When this gets to ninety-five percent, yes, the APRs are going to go down, right? But there's more USDC backing iron and holding his peg. So really, the main concern with iron, with iron, isn't iron holding its peg. The main concerns are two. There's two concerns, actually. The first concern is smart contract risk, right? This is a farm. There's always smart contract risk. They could get hacked, right? I'm not saying they're going to rug you, but they could get hacked. They could get exploited, right? And you could lose your money that way, right? The second risk is if your farming titan is, is titan going to hold its peg. Well, who knows, right? There's two situations in which, in which titan could lose its value, right? One is a bunch, a bunch of whales come along. And they say, eh, you know what? I'm happy with this value. I want to get out of this. And they dump. And when one whale dumps, another whale dumps. And when another whale dumps, another whale dumps. And a crash crashes the price down. And maybe there aren't any other whales that want to come in and buy it and push the price up. In that situation, it tightens down. But does iron lose its peg? No, not necessarily. Right? Not necessarily at all. Iron will only lose iron will only lose its peg if one, there's not enough USDC collateralizing it, right? Um, or two, there's just so many, you know, maybe every single person doesn't want to hold iron anymore, right? If we look in BSC, where Iron Finance first came out, we see that iron has held its peg since it came out, right? Iron has never lost its peg, right? And, the, and on BSC, Iron Finance suffered two exploits that weren't even their fault. They're the fault of Value DeFi, right? Which is a platform I would never, I would never recommend, right? Just based on their poor track, uh, track record and history of getting hacked, right? But iron has always held its peg, right? So I'm, me personally, I'm not worried about iron holding holding its peg. I'm more worried about Titan holding its value, right? Because I have some Titan. I'm more worried about smart contract risk. To be honest with you, I'm always worried about smart contract risk. So, you know, I'm not saying that iron is the best farm out there. I'm not saying that it's a farm you should get into. I'm not saying that, you know, just throw all your money at this because there's risks. There's major risks, right? Um... But I think Iron has is really shown that they know what they're doing, and is a good case, is a good case study to look at in terms of 
what is a good what what is a good farm when you're looking at one you know how do they you know how are how are they setting up their farm how are they planning to hold value right um you know have they thought things through right so you know if you like videos like this guys you know i think that's it for the day but you know hit the like button hit the subscribe button um i'll, I'll do some deeper dives on some other farms and um yeah we'll see you later